Hello students, I just wanted to make a video that would deal with working with very large K values. Now, when we've been doing KAs and KBs and KSPs, our values were always really small, something like 10 to the minus fifth, 10 to minus 10th. And now that we have started dealing with KFs, our values are actually quite large, something like 10 to the 12th or 10 to the 20th. And uh, that creates some interesting problems for us in the way that we've been doing our equilibrium uh, rice tables because uh, we can't always neglect x. So let's look at an example here. I have this uh, copper complex ion, tetraamine copper. So uh, the copper binds to four ammonia molecules to make this complex ion. So this is our complex ion over here. And the Kf for this is very large, 5.0 times 10 to the 12th. Uh, so let's imagine that we have 0.1 mol molar copper and 0.6 molar uh, NH3 at the beginning. So we'll make a little rice table here. Uh, we know some of it, it's going to go forward. Oops. So this will be minus 4x, this will be plus x, and we get 0.1 minus x, 0.6 minus 4x, and x. Now, here's the deal. We can write our expression. We get kf is 5.0 times 10 to the 12th, and it's going to be equal to the concentration of CuNH3 4 2 plus divided by the concentration of copper 2 plus times the concentration of NH3 to the fourth, to the fourth power. Okay, making me a little bit nervous here because that's going to be some hard algebra, right? So if we plug in our values from the rice table, we actually end up with something that is very difficult to work with. Um, and if we can't use the small x approximation, this would be essentially impossible for us to solve without a computer, right? So uh, can we use the small x approximation? Well, we know that our K is very large, and we know that we're starting with all reactants. And so actually, we expect that most of it will disappear. X will be pretty close to 0.1 uh, in this case. And so we can't use a small x approximation. So what are we supposed to do? Uh, what we're going to do instead is we're going to, we're going to make basically a fake initial conditions here. So we're going to redo our rice table and we're going to pretend. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to pretend we have our initial amounts, 0.1 and 0.6 and 0. And we're going to pretend that it reacts completely, okay? This is our pretend, pretend, change. So this would be minus 0.1, this would be minus 0.4, 4 times 0.1 because of the stoichiometry, and this would be plus 0.1. And then we're going to have 0, 0.2, and 0.1. And this is going to be our new pretend initial conditions. Okay, why did we do this? Well, what we've done is we've made Q infinity. We're dividing by zero in our expression for Q. So Q would be infinity. And that means Q is greater than K. And it means that the reaction will proceed spontaneously in the reverse direction. So we're going to back react this. For a new, oopsie, for our new change, we're going to back react minus x plus 4x plus x. And at equilibrium, 
we'll have these concentrations. Okay, so we have these new equilibrium concentrations. And now, can we use the small x approximation? Well, actually, yes, we can, because k is very large, and we know that we have mostly products in our new and initial conditions, these fake initial conditions that we made up. We had mostly products, so we think that the change of x will actually be small. So now when we plug it into our kf expression, we'll get 0.1 minus x, x, 0.2 plus 4x to the fourth. And um, because we're using the small x approximation, this little guy is going to go away. And thankfully, this guy goes away and makes our life a lot easier. So we're going to approximate this is 0.1 over x times 0.2 to the fourth. Um, so now solving with our kf value, we can get our x value 1.3 times 10 to the minus 11. And we can double check, yes, indeed, x is very small compared to 0.1 or 0.2 that we were adding or subtracting it from. And um, essentially, this is a way to deal with having large k values. We run into this especially with kf values, the formation of complex ions, because they tend to have very large kfs. So we make this sort of pretend initial condition where we react everything as far forward as it can go, just stoichiometrically. And then we can use our small x approximation in order to make our lives easier and not have to worry about dealing with whatever it's called when you have x to the fourth in your equation. So um, this is a way that we can deal with large k values. Another way that you could deal with it if you wanted to would be to just reverse the reaction the other way and do one over the k. But you end up with the same problem if you're starting in that case with products, you'd have to do this fake initial conditions. So this can work either for um, large Ks when you're starting with mostly reactants and the same principles apply if you're working with small Ks and you have mostly products. Uh, in order to make the, your small X approximation first react completely to make fake initial conditions and then you can use the small X approximation. Okay, I hope that's helpful and I hope you have a good day.